The science moms are working to protect the future of our kids and giving you the tools to demand change. The nonpartisan group has been making headlines over the past couple of years as they break down facts and bust myths about climate change. And one of the members, Dr. Erica Smithwick, a professor at Penn State, joins us today to talk about the group's important message and how other moms can get involved. Thank you so much for being yes. here today. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to talk about that. I don't know about you, oh, but this. is it like comforting to know that there's this group of moms out there that exists like this? It's amazing. It is. It's like a comfy blanket because I think all the time, especially about climate change, yeah. yes. this world will not be ours forever. That's it right. is so important that they know what's going to happen and how that they can help. So who are the science moms? Yeah, so science moms, so we're scientists first, we're climate scientists, but we're also moms. And so our job is to kind of provide information to other moms so that they can help their kids make decisions to learn about climate change and then take action maybe in their own communities and in their households. Absolutely. Really love this because there's yes. nothing like a mama bear that just wants the best <laughs> for their kids. And, and other kids and too. That's right. And we appreciate right. you. So, Mom superpowers. Yeah. Oh, that's right. <laughs> so you, you brought some, some tools here right. and I mean kids love to read. Hopefully your kids love to read. This is a great way to introduce these kinds of things to them at an early age. Yeah, so we're heading into summer. Right you now a lot of us are getting our kids out of school and wondering what to do and some days we wake up to rain like I did in State College this morning. Yeah. And so you, instead of screen time we have some good options for you to keep that learning going through the summer but also to help you learn about the environment and make connections. And one of the things we've learned at Science Moms is that it's really important to have age appropriate conversations right. about yes. these topics because climate anxiety kids can get really concerned about this. So what we brought is a couple examples of books for any age, and we think they're they are really fun. So this first one is called Counting on the Earth, and it's really bright, bold colors, really good for your infants and your toddlers, and it, it's one of those books that you can interact with your kid and count the bees and count oh. the stars, and I used to love that with my kids, right? Yeah. Uh, but it's also a board book, and I wish my kids were young enough to still read these. I <laughs> have one. Don't okay. worry. I'll handle it for All you. All right. So you can box. pop it in your stroller on a walk. You can also take it on your, in your beach bag. You know, take it to the beach. So it's really fun. And next, this one will be yes. a little bit so, older. So this is, speaking of the beach, this is about the ocean, right? The two thirds of our Earth's surface is the ocean, really important for buffering against the most, you know, hardest part of climate change, but also um, in trouble itself with coral reefs and sea level sure. rise. So how do you talk to your kids? This book is really funny. It's about a krill and an octopus and they travel all around the world. Really great. I love the name of it too. The ocean is kind of a big deal. That's something I'd say. There's a few <laughs> more in that series too, which is really great. I love it. What's this one in the middle? So this one is called Lights Out. Out. And as you may know, in, in uh, Pennsylvania, we have a lot of flyways where hawks and birds come up and down, and uh, these birds can get distracted by urban light. Right. We're seeing more and more of that during migration periods yes. of cities saying, we're going to turn the lights off at night because we know this is going to be a heavy migration period. Right. So this is a book where kids can get to learn about that problem, but also it's a story about how kids can take action to kind of write letters and say, hey, this is important to me. Well, and that's really that. important for addressing climate anxiety is when kids can get empowered. Absolutely. Yeah. And adults. Let's and be adults. honest. Yeah. <laughs> It always they feels can empower good. the adults. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> this one, maybe for a so little bit older. A little bit older, a yeah. bit of a longer read. Um, I love this book because I teach a lot of the same concepts that, that are addressed in this book. It talks about the early environmental movement, um, but it's at an age appropriate level for kids who are really interested. But it's about taking a natural park into your backyard. Like you don't oh. have to go to a, a national natural park in you know the west right. to be able to enjoy nature. So it's kind of like tips on bringing pollinators back to your backyard. And so that's a fun thing to do with your yes. kids. I think at the basis of what you're doing, the core of it, and I love this on the back, so I'm just gonna flip it over really, really quickly because it says kids can save the world. Yes, yes Right, exactly. and we're putting kind of that power in them, not with the anxiety attached <laughs> to it, but that you do have the power to do small changes that can. And that, and that really can make such a big difference. Just starting small in your own backyard is really an important first step. And last up, you have this great okay, book Okay, so fun. So this is a graphic novel. So Ooh, for those readers who really like graphic yes. novels, right? So this is a really great story because it's full of action and adventure. It tells the story of two kids separated globally, one in Alaska and one in India. Wow. And they're both suffering from the effects of climate change, like sea level rise and storms. But it's a power packed story of how these kids are working with their communities to help them. So it sort of shows how we're all globally connected in this. We all live on one earth. And a lot of our stories are the same. Frankly. Absolutely. So, yeah, they yeah. all are. And it uh, just feels a lot less anxiety ridden when yeah. you know that you can approach it so realistically. It's a conversation and on their level. starter. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if I'm alone in this. I don't think that I am. I think we need more science moms. And oh, I, yes. we'd love to have you <laughs> Absolutely. Back. It's it's wonderful. Yes, you'll save the world. Thanks for being here. Thank you. If you're interested in buying any of the books that Dr. Erica mentioned or getting involved with science moms, we're going to have a link on our website at kdk.com slash talkpittsburgh.